Hello everybody, Stefan here from Be a Python Dev. We are going to set up a Windows 10 workstation for Python development. Uh, first thing we need to do is go to python.org. Go ahead and download Python. Uh, here, download Windows. You'll find all different options under Python 3.7.3. That's the newest release. Uh, we're going to focus on Python 3 because Python 2 support is going to be ending come January 1st. 2020 if you're watching this past then uh, don't use Python 2 because you're not getting any security updates so any hacks and exploits that end up being found can get leaked into your software I don't recommend doing that so anyways Python 3.7.3 as of March 25th this is the latest video is June uh, looks like they do a new release every four ish months and this is only a 0.2 to 0.3 so a minor release. Uh, it looks like they still update some of the other ones as well every now and then with those security updates. Um, but anyways, typically the easiest way to install this will be your x86-64 executable installer. Don't think most computers are only x86 these days. Most of them are 64-bit, so this is likely the one you want. Uh, so go ahead and download this. It will pop up in your bottom left corner. Click on this when it's done. I just downloaded this and installed it already, so I don't have the option to install, but you will. Um, this box will have a default install option. Let's go ahead and do that, and that works for most cases. You can also add Python to your path. That will help you if you're opening a git bash shell, a bash window, any of that stuff. So you can just type in Python. It'll go into the shell, and you can run commands from there. So typically, adding it to the path by default, easy every time. But once you get Python installed, you're going to want to set up an IDE. An IDE is an integrated development environment. Uh, there's some really sophisticated ones out there, such as PyCharm, which is released by IntelliJ, I want to say. Um, there is a community version of this, so you can use it for free. Uh, actually, IntelliJ is their Java version. PyCharm is released by JetBrains, which is a company that specializes in IDEs. Uh, lots of sophisticated options in there to ease your coding experience, such as refactoring and uh, getting IntelliSense, which helps you complete your variables. And you also get autocomplete options, which will see all the variables that you've already declared. And when you start typing it, it will do like an autocomplete and just hit tab. And that will allow you to get more specific variable naming. That'll make more sense as you develop more. If you are a professional developer, then you already know the benefits of that. So I like to use visual code, but we will type in visual code here in Google. This will pop us up to code.visualstudio.com. Go in here, go ahead and just click download for Windows. It auto detects the platform you're on. If you're on a Mac, you download for Mac, on Ubuntu, same thing. Uh, it works on all three of those platforms. It's very nice. Uh, so thank you, Microsoft, for making this. I personally developed with this on my job. I'm a big fan of it. Pretty simple, but still provides powerful features such as the autocomplete IntelliSense, uh, some refactoring options, and some pkin2 functions, which automatically looks through the directory you're in, kind of link together classes and whatnot. So, anyways, download for Windows. Uh, same thing, pops up in the bottom left if you're using Chrome. Otherwise, forever, it just downloads. Once it's finished downloads, we will go ahead and install it. And if you added Python to the path, then Visual Studio will automatically see Python from your path environment variable. All right, so I got this thing. Setup has detected that Visual Studio code is currently running. That's because I just installed it right before starting this video. Uh, go ahead and run through this MSI. Again, it's really easy. Just one-click install. And then you'll get the option to open it up once you're done. Open files with code. Open directories with code. Um, this makes it easy if that computer is mainly used for development or you're developing a lot of things and in your directories you can just right click on a file and you get the option to open with code. Uh, that provides some benefit. You don't have to open code right away or you can open new code windows or it'll just pop it into the one that you have currently open. Uh, you can also open directories. So open with code and then this will pop up the whole folder structure in your left-hand window, along with subfolders and all that recursive fun stuff.
All right, once you're done installing Visual Code, go ahead and open it up. And if you added Python to your path from the previous part, it'll show up in the bottom left-hand corner. That code recognizes Python, it's there. Um, you'll also get the option to install some modules and a linter. I highly recommend a linter because it'll automatically point out when you're doing something that's against normal naming conventions. Uh, and the reason you want to stick with naming conventions is because if you take a file, you hand it to another developer, and he's also familiar with those same naming conventions, it will help him be able to learn your file so you guys can collaborate a lot easier. Uh, very beneficial in development practice, especially corporate development practice. So just to see that we got things online and working, we will go ahead and add a new file, hello world.py. So Python uses the .py extension. Um, that will help code recognize that this is a Python file. It will format it as such, and then it will give you some Python-y options where you can run the Python file in the terminal. So we will just print hello world. We'll save it, right click, run Python file in terminal, and you can see down here, hello world shows up in our terminal. So now we installed Python, we installed code, we installed some basic linters and Python modules, and we ran our first hello world file where we just print hello world, showed one of the easiest basic commands in Python. So provided you made it this far, you are now set up for further Python development and the first step in your Python journey. Good luck.